Welcome back to my channel guys. As promised, this is your May flower, your May birth flower, which is the Lily of the Valley. Uh, so I'm starting off with a gorgeous Lake Superior stone. Um, the background is going to shine through once I seal it with resin so you'll be able to see its beauty a little bit more uh, when we're done. But uh, ignore that little leaf I just put in the front. That's not going to stay. <laughs> I change it up as I go along. Um, so just ignore that one. Wait till I have like the full outline of the leaves before you get started. And then you can see how I kind of just blended that leaf in and forgot about it and then added a different one in the center. <laughs> so I'm using a nice dark green to start off with. You can, depending on the darkness of your stone, you might want to start off with white just so that you have a nice white background, white canvas to start with. Um, and then the colors will be much brighter, especially once you seal it, because once you seal it, everything kind of darkens a little. So I'm starting off, I'm going to do a couple of coats of this Hunter Green uh, where I'm putting these two leaves right now. I've changed it into two leaves. <laughs> and you can use a sponge here, but I'm using a blending brush. And if you need help with how to make a blending brush, you might even have one. Um, I do have a tutorial called Blending Brush. So I'm going to post that in the description of this video just in case you need help with it. Um, or you can just search my video list for Blending Brush and or Rachel's Rocks Blending Brush and it'll go right there. It's just a quick tutorial showing you how to DIY yourself a little brush so that you can use it as almost like a sponge. Um, so I'm just blending in on top of this dark hunter green. I'm putting some bright green in some areas and that's why you might want to use a sponge or a blending brush because I'm just trying to kind of lighten certain areas of the leaves. Um, yeah, just for fun. <laughs> I want this to look as beautiful as possible and I'm trying to make it look a little bit more realistic than what I normally do with most of my stones. So we're going to give it a shot, see how we do. Um, May is like another one of my favorite months, definitely because that's when we have the flowers coming up here in Northern Ontario and the leaves are finally starting to uh, grow on the trees and uh, that kind of stuff makes me happy. The Just the, the sign of growth and fresh new things coming alive and flowers blooming, all that kind of stuff just makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy. I wouldn't be weird if I weren't me. <laughs> so I've added a third leaf. This one's a little bit taller than the other ones. And we're going to bring up the beautiful little bell-shaped flowers in the center of this little mass of leaves. So I've lightened certain areas on that back leaf as well using a little bit of bright green and we're going to leave those the way they are. It might not look too light to you but under my lighting it looks terrible but once I seal it with resin you'll be able to see that lighter green on top of the hunter green a lot better. Um, now we do need a little stalk to come out with little branches. Um, I'm not going to give you technical terms of the lily of the valley. <laughs> so please don't expect that from me. I'm too tired for that. Um, but anyway, it's a stalk with branches. <laughs> and then we're going to hang little bells off of those branches. Um, but first, I am going to incorporate Mayan gold. Any gold paint will do, or if you like silver, you can also use silver, or if you don't, you can just outline with black. It's totally up to you what you want to do here, um, but I'm going to outline almost everything with a little bit of gold. So some places it's not going to be perfect. I'm not going to try and outline absolutely every little branch, every little stalk, uh, every little flower, but there will be a little bit of gold outline in certain areas of each thing. Um because that's just how I roll. <laughs> I roll with gold um, and it always looks so pretty. So if you guys have been around for a while, you've been my channel for a while, you know uh, gold's one of my favorite accessories to every rock. <laughs> uh, anything that shines, anything that's glittery, that's, that's where 
that's where I, I come in. So there isn't going to be, well, there is going to be dots. I was going to say for those of you who don't like dots, this one isn't dotted, but there is going to be some dots, um, but you won't even know. You won't even know. You can't even tell just by looking at the thumbnail, um, but we are going to start off with dots and turn them into flowers. So you'll see. You'll see. I'll show you a couple of things I have at my desk as well uh, before I show you the final version of this gorgeous Lily of the Valley. Um, I'll just show you some stuff I've got kicking around my desk, uh, stuff that I've completed since the last time I, I put out a, a tutorial for you guys. So we will see. Um, now what I'm doing here, once I've outlined everything in gold, I'm putting some lines up coming up from the bottom and fanning them out a little bit. And if you take a look at uh, paintings or drawings or pictures of Lily of the Valley, you can kind of see some lines in the leaves. So that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to show off there, but I didn't want to use black or, or really dark green. I, I just thought I would accent those wrinkles in the leaf or lines uh, in gold. Why not? <laughs> still, still gives the same effect. So here's what I was talking about with the dots. I'm using one of my bigger dotting tools. You can also use the end of a thicker paintbrush um, and just dip it in your, wa in, your, in your water, in your white and bring it on in. And those are your little dangly little bell flowers. They look like little bells, um, but we're gonna turn these dots into bells. So now that I have wet dots, I'm gonna work with that paint and I'm gonna try and shape out some little Lily of the Valley flowers. And uh, you can definitely take a look on Google or Pinterest what Lily of the Valley flowers look like. Um, there are different shades. They're not always white, um, but I wanted to do white ones because they're the traditional uh, one that you find when you're looking up the Mayflower. So I'm just turning them in all different directions, different sizes. Some of them you're going to be able to peek inside the bell of the flower. Um, no, that's not the technical term, I'm pretty sure, but you guys know what I mean. Um, but I'm going to find the inside of the bell in some of them, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, uh, but basically, some of them aren't quite opened yet, so you might see just a bud that is like about to split. Um, but then most of the ones that are lower at the bottom, they're a little bit bigger and they're open. So we'll be able to see that they're they're open and they have cute little petals um, and they look like little bells, like I said. We're gonna let those dry real good because I put big dots of white paint there. So there's like a nice thick layer of white paint. You're not going to be able to see th through them uh, right to the stone. So that's nice that I've I've at least done a couple of coats of white there just by adding that giant dot. Um, now I'm going to outline them in black and I'm going to find the inside part of the bell on some of them. So you'll see the way I'm opening it up a little bit so the petal looks like it's flipped up or you can just kind of see inside that little bell. I hope I'm explaining this okay and I'm moving it in a little bit closer so that you guys can see. Um, if you make some of your black lines too thick you can thin them out later uh, with white paint so don't worry if you if you're having a hard time outlining these little tiny flowers uh, just take your time I'm definitely taking my time, but I've had a lot of practice. Um, and also I've slowed the video down in some spots so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, or I've sped it up. So it might look like I'm a machine, but I'm really not working that fast. I'm being very careful. And you can see some of them look like they're they're about to split open. I'm making like little cracks in the in the bloom there. Um, but I want to be able to see inside some of them. And the funny thing is, is I forgot to hit record when I mix together two colors that are going to go on the inside of the bells. Um, and it's actually royal blue mixed with white. 
Um, and I don't even show you the part where I'm painting that in, but I promise you I'll slow it down so you can see what I'm talking about a little later. But for now, we are just outlining and then thinning out anything that's too thick with the black. Um, and like I said, I'm also going to be outlining it with a little bit of gold here and there. I'm not going to go uh, into full detail like I am with the black, but I do want to accent each flower with some gold. And uh, yeah, so you can see how I'm kind of opening up the bells at the bottom of some of them. Not all of them. We can't see inside all of them, um, but you can see where I've separated and made it look like you can you can, a bee can go right inside there and, and have a little sniff <laughs> stop and smell the flowers. Um, so here is the French blue and the white that I was talking about. I mixed that together to make it a lighter French blue. And then I applied it into the little portions that look like they're up inside the bell. So you're going to see that now it's all blue inside those areas where it's kind of shaded. So I, I just put that color inside to make it look shaded. That's just, that's just what I'm seeing. <laughs> you tell me if it doesn't make sense to you. You tell me if it works. You tell me if it's playing tricks with your eyes. <laughs> um, you do what you want with your stone, by the way. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just here to inspire you, but have fun with it. And if you want to do pink lily of the valley, you can. You want to do a light lavender, you can. Totally up to you. These are just the colors that I've chosen. And these colors will be listed in the description of my video. So I am now outlining the stem and the little branches. <laughs> I'm sure they're not branches. Um, but I'm just giving them a little bit of an outline of black, but super, super thin. I'm being careful with it. Sometimes if you need to thin out your black paint uh, with a little bit of water so that it maneuvers a little bit easier and it's not gloopy and globby and thick, um, a little bit of water will usually help because acrylic paint is water-based. Um, so each flower, I'm just making sure everything's outlined with a little bit of gold. You can't see it very well under this light, but I promise you there is gold being applied. <laughs> I am not fibbing. See here, I will show you. You can see it glimmer a little bit. There's just a little bit of gold, but you can still see the black outline as well. I want to see all of it, all of it together. Um, so now that the blue inside the bells is dry, I'm going to add a little dot of daffodil yellow. And if you've seen Lily of the Valley flowers in real life, you know that there's just a little smidgen of yellow in there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to make sure that I use a smaller dotting tool. Um, that way I can make sure my dots kind of go with the size of flower that I'm putting them in. I don't want to do too big of a dot on a really small flower. So just be careful with it. You can use toothpicks or also... Um, you can also use knitting needles, crochet hooks, anything that has a pointy end, needles, toothpicks, paint brushes, um, all sorts of things, all different sizes all over your house. So, uh, don't rush out and buy dotting tools until you are comfortable and, uh, you don't need to spend money if you don't want to. You do have stuff laying around the house, believe it or not. <laughs> so this looks pretty cute. I'm going to let this dry really, really well. Um, but I'm going to add some of my handmade um, watercolor. It's metallic. This one, you can't really tell by looking at it under this light. But in one direction, it shines almost pink. Uh, but in another direction, it shines very blue, uh, similar to the royal blue that's inside the bells of these lily of the F valley. So um, it's going to look super nice when it's resin. You're not going to be able to really tell under this light at the moment. Just kind of looks shiny, kind of looks glittery. Um, and this, of course, is also 
optional. You don't have to do this. If you have acrylic paint that's glittery, you can do that. If you don't want glitter, you don't have to. Just leave it the way it was. It'll look fantastic anyway. So I'm just making sure they all have a little bit and you'll be able to see that better when I seal it with resin a little bit later. So I have enough room to put my signature on this one. I'm just gonna quickly put RM um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of gold to that RM. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna put it in a resin bath. And then while it's in the resin bath, I get the chance to show you some stuff that I've got on my desk because I always love sharing that stuff with you. Um, so how about we take a step back we'll look at this now that we've got it all done I'm gonna let it dry for a couple hours of course before I seal it with resin um, so this whole resin process takes some time and it's actually gonna be overnight uh, and then you'll see it when I wake up in the morning <laughs> stay tuned for what's at my desk all right so I like sharing with you guys some of the stuff that I'm doing. And in one of my last uh, most recent tutorials, I promised you I would show you this one because it wasn't completely done yet. I hadn't sealed it with resin and the rock is just beautiful. It's got like so much green in it and I wish I could show you better under this lighting, but I'm just using a cell phone to record my tutorials and it doesn't show off these like they should be seen. <laughs> I always warn people that my things are way better in person than what you can see through a video camera or a camera lens at all. This one, I love, love, love peacock feathers, so I'm always making these. All of these will be going into my shop probably today, um, so keep uh, keep checking if you're if you're interested. I have a couple of really nice foam grips. This was one I showed you that was just glitter, uh, but then I did a beautiful, colorful, dotted yin yang over top of it. And kitty paw print. It's like a bluish purple chrome uh, cat print on top of metallic watercolors, all sealed under a thick coat of resin. Um, and are perfect for keeping some art on your phone. This one, of course, it does not show off the color. I'm going to bring it closer. Um, there's Swarovski crystals all around the edge. It color shifts like crazy. And, of course, this light does not show it off the way I would like it to as well. On a perfect Lake Superior stone, I might add. Um, well, I think that's all I can show you, but I can bring you outside. It's a bit cloudy. And I'm going to show you the shiny version of our beautiful Lily of the Valley. Isn't that gorgeous? It Once again, it's so cloudy out that I can't really uh, show off the, the glitter and the gold. But I'll bring it inside and I'll try and show it to you from inside. Um, I'm going to try and get a little bit closer to those little bell flowers so that you can see some of that metallic watercolor in there and the gold of course oh hi orchids <laughs> there's that glitter that I was talking about still I just couldn't find the right lighting so I took a still picture for you uh, on my desk I hope that you guys had fun with this one it's not too hard is it were you able to follow along okay or am I a complete mess? <laughs> you know I love you guys. You know what I'm going to tell you to do, right? I'm going to tell you to keep painting. No matter what is going on in your life, just keep painting and keep smiling. And I will be back again in a couple of days with a new one. I love you. Bye.